Hello plant friends, this is Miron from Basie Plants and welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is doing great. I hope you're all healthy and staying safe and finding a way to deal with these challenging times. In this video, I want to talk about philodendrons and I have one specific philodendron that I would like to talk about and it is this philodendron imperial red that you can see here. You will get a better look of the plant a bit later on in the video. It's a very easy philodendron to take care of, in my opinion. It doesn't require much. It's a steady grower, quite slow, not a very fast philodendron, not a very fast plant to grow. But there is one issue with it that's quite serious. And I have some friends who also bought this philodendron. They're having the same issue with it as I did. It's not really pest related, but it is something that can kill your plant very rapidly if you don't recognize it and if you don't act upon it fast. Let's just get into this plant. You can see this is my philodendron, not looking too bad. Uh, it is growing a bit towards the light. I have it actually on this shelf. There is another level and there is a spotlight above. Again, something you cannot see. So it's growing towards that. And this is what we will actually talk about. You can see that some of the leaves are cut in half, such as this one and then this one here. What had happened with this philodendron is when I purchased it, it looked, it looked okay. Um, it had, uh, I think maybe one or two more leaves on the bottom that were small and they just had the tiniest yellow spot. And when I bought it, I didn't really know what this was. I thought, you know, maybe it's natural yellowing of the leaf. Didn't look too suspicious to me. So, you know, I left them. And then uh, when they turned yellow, I would just snip them off as I usually do. Uh, I thought, you know, that's the end of that. But I noticed that there were more yellow spots. And then on this one as well. And then some other leaves that are no longer here, the edge of the leaf would get yellowish spots and then there were blotches in the leaves. I really was puzzled by it until I went back to the flower store and I saw it's happening on the other philodendrons as well. So I thought, you know, this must be something related to some type of a disease such as maybe virus or bacterial. And that actually helped me a lot. When I started thinking about this, I started, you know, looking on the internet. I did find an article that I will attach below about Calatheus and bacterial leaf blight. When I looked uh, at the pictures, you know, it started to look a bit familiar to me and it looked quite similar. But then again, I looked for more information about blight in philodendron and I didn't really find any. And that's actually the reason why I'm recording this video. I really had a challenging time discovering some new information about this. That uh, article about Calatheus was very helpful because First of all, it's a scientific article. What happens is with this blight, if you have it on your plant, it will quickly spread because it only needs the contact of the leaves to spread. So, you know, if leaves are touching, it will spread to another leaf. If you have more plants clustered together, it will also spread to other plants. So what this article discussed was that, you know, how to deal with this issue. And really there is no solution. The only solution is to destroy the plant if it's too affected or to cut the leaves. There is no pesticide, no insecticide, which makes sense. This is this is not a pest. It's a bacterial thing. Fungicide will not work as well. It's not a fungus. There is no known solution besides mechanically removing affected leaves. I was lucky that some of the leaves, uh, like this one, the yellowing was um, more toward, towards the edge, so I could just snip the leaf in half. Um, but I did leave them on for photosynthesis because it did remove a large amount of the of the foliage. All of the other leaves that you can see in this philodendron, which is five more, is either the growth that it had put out uh, during the summer or winter growth. Before I removed the leaves, it continued to spread and spread and spread. When I removed uh, the affected leaves and parts of the leaves, it stopped. No more yellowing. If this is the affected leaf, if the yellowing was here, I would probably just cut it here. I do want to leave enough of the tissue around the actual infection 
just to make sure that it didn't spread. This is quite common for imperial red and imperial green. How you can avoid this bacterial infection? It appears that philodendron, this philodendron imperial red and then the imperial green, and also the calatheus, for example, cinderiana, is very sensitive to water just staying on the leaves, even in the greenhouse environment. The, the way to avoid this is really to keep the leaves dry. Of course, if you take your plant outside, this was outside last summer, it did get rain on the leaves, it did, did nothing about that, but you know, staying outside, there is a lot of air movement, even compared to a greenhouse environment, there's just a lot of air movement, and the leaves will dry out quickly. But if you're keeping it inside, do not let the water hang out on the leaves. When I clean it, I just take a sponge, I and I don't clean it a lot. <laughs> as you can see. I just take a sponge, I gently wipe the leaves, and then I will take a dry paper towel and then go over it just to make sure everything is clean. I don't want water sitting on these leaves. And that's actually why I don't mist my plants, especially if I know they have sensitive foliage like Calatheus, because that's a really, really good way to get this bacterial blight. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new. It is possible I missed something, so if I did, Please comment in the comments below, ask questions. I would love to help you out, especially to save your plant because it is salvageable. It's not like pests that you have to spray multiple times. You just have to be very, uh, the first time when you're cutting the leaves, you have to be very, um, you have to be very brutal the first time you're doing it and then your plant will be okay. So yeah, that would be all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it informative and we will see you next time. Bye. Have a great weekend, by the way, or whatever day you post this. See you!